Information discussed in this podcast may be sensitive in nature to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. On April 18th, 2005, Tina Ray Wilson called her local rental store to tell them they could come pick up the TV that she had been renting from them. Tina, 43 years old at the time, was living in Whitehall, Ohio, a suburb of Columbus, Ohio. Tina had some interesting things going on in her life at that time as Tina was a practicing Wiccan. Wiccans are individuals that practice a pagan religion and usually identify as witches. But I don't want the Halloween image of a witch in your mind as that is not the case. When the store representatives showed up at her apartment later that day, Tina wasn't there, and neither was the TV. When Tina didn't show up for her shift at work, and she was a reliable employee, her coworkers began to worry. But it would be three weeks before she was officially reported as missing when her mother couldn't reach her and finally called the police. Upon a check of her apartment, it was noted that she left behind all her personal belongings. The only personal items that they could find missing in the apartment was her pet cat and that TV. It was a mysterious case. Where was this TV? Where was her cat? And most importantly, where is Tina Ray Wilson? Hello, and welcome to a bonus episode of the Where Are They podcast. This case caught my attention because of some of the unusual details. And of course, the fact that 13 years later, we still have no answers on the whereabouts of Tina Ray Wilson and little to no clues to work with either. What we do know about Tina is that in 2005, she was living in Whitehall, Ohio. Whitehall is a suburb of Columbus. It's located just six miles east of the city. Columbus, Ohio is the capital of the state, so fairly populated. Whitehall population specifically is just over 20,000 residents. Now, despite the big city feel of the area and the surrounding area, there are lots of parks and recreation areas in and around Columbus. Tina was living in an apartment in Whitehall, and she was working at a local Wendy's restaurant. She was known to be a good worker and a loyal employee and seemed to get along with everybody just fine. It was mentioned that she did have some health issues, but it isn't specified what that may have been. It is believed that she lived alone and took care of herself. On the morning of Monday, April 18th, 2005, Tina called her local rental store that she had been renting a television from and told them that they could come pick up the TV. Other than being able to confirm that this happened through the store records and phone records, we aren't sure why she made this decision. Was she planning on moving? Did she want to get rid of the payment? No one quite knows for sure. The strange thing about this is that when the employees from that store showed up at her apartment to get that TV, no one was home. Tina also missed her next shift at work. Tina worked at a local Wendy's fast food restaurant. Those that knew her well at work said she never missed work and she was very reliable and trustworthy. They believed that if she had intended to leave her job to quit for whatever reason, she would have told them and she would have told management but no one heard anything from her at all. Meanwhile, Tina's mother is also trying to reach her to no avail. It isn't sure how close they were, but her mother would keep trying to find her daughter for three weeks. 
Finally, on May 6th, 2005, with no word from her and no sign of Tina anywhere, her mother finally calls the police and reports her missing. Now, police do start to investigate right away, and they immediately try to retrace any of Tina's steps or any activity that they can find on Tina. And they are able to determine that that last contact she had with anyone seemed to be that call to the rental store on April 18th. Now, that had been three weeks prior to anyone reporting her as missing, putting authorities at a big disadvantage. Law enforcement did gain access to the apartment, and they noted that there were no signs of a break-in, no signs of foul play, nothing really looked out of the ordinary or amiss in any way. They did note that although the rental store didn't pick up the TV that day because no one was home, the TV was missing from the apartment. Detectives also learned that Tina's cat was missing. However, all of her personal belongings were inside the apartment still, which included her purse and her wallet. They would also learn that Tina never picked up her last paycheck at Wendy's either. A thorough search of the apartment did lead detectives to some other interesting things about Tina. It was clear that she was a practicing Wiccan. When police had checked her home, they found a clean knife lying on the bed, several witchcraft books, and cards around a used candle. And some people that knew Tina also confirmed that she was a practicing Wiccan. Wicca is a modern-day pagan religion whose followers identify as Wiccans or witches. NBC News did a story on Wiccans and the pagan religions this past Halloween, and they identified it as the fastest growing spiritual religion in the world. The religious practice known as Wicca involves many different beliefs and sub-beliefs, and not knowing exactly what Tina was practicing, we can't really dive into how that may or may not have impacted her habits or her movements at the time. There really is quite a wide array of Wiccan practices. But it would be interesting to know, was there maybe a special place that she went to to worship or to practice her religion? Did she maybe belong to a group of Wiccans in that area? A lot of Wiccans do practice magic or witchcraft, but not all of them. However, it does seem with the books and the items that was laying around Tina's apartment, it seems that she at least dabbled somewhat in witchcraft or was interested in learning more about it. But does that have anything to do with her disappearance? We know surprisingly very little about Tina's life at the time she vanished. There were very few clues pointing anyone to where Tina may have gone. No signs of a struggle. There was no signs of foul play. Everything Tina had seemed to be left behind, except the TV and the cat. I find this TV detail really odd. Why would she call to have that TV picked up? and then take the TV and leave, but leave everything else that she had behind, including her purse and her wallet. Family, friends, and law enforcement had really zero clues to go on. That is, until 2017, a man by the name of Sean Great confessed to stabbing a woman to death in 2005 and discarding her remains. And in fact, skeletal remains had been found right where he said he disposed of the body, in Marion County. Marion County, Ohio, is just north of Whitehall, Ohio, where Tina had been living. These remains had been discovered back in 2007, but at the time, they didn't find anything with the remains, and the remains were skeletized, so they were unable to identify who that was. So fast forward 10 years later, Sean Great said that It was him that kidnapped and murdered this woman, but he couldn't remember the woman's name. He thought maybe it was Dana or Diane, but he did know very specific details that law enforcement hadn't released, leading them to believe that Great was quite possibly telling them the truth. Great also would help authorities create a composite sketch of this woman, the woman that he had murdered back in 2005. And upon further investigation, a detective looking through missing person files 
realized that the sketch was a good match for Tina Ray Wilson and that the timeline matched. Sean Great said that he had kidnapped and murdered this woman back in 2005. Tina Ray Wilson had gone missing back in 2005. While the tip seemed very promising in the beginning, eventually they were able to use DNA and to determine that those remains were not Tina Ray Wilson. But Sean Great had been accused, tried, and convicted of murdering at least four women. He had actually finally been caught when one of the victims that he had been holding captive was able to call 911 while he was asleep. She whispered to the 911 operator while inside this house, and she had to work to lead authorities to her while he was asleep in the next room. I can't imagine how terrifying all of that must have been, but thankfully she was brave enough and Sean Great was finally arrested. Sean did plead guilty to his crimes and never showed any remorse. To date, there have been no hits on Tina's social security number or her driver's license. Obviously, we have very little information here to even form an opinion or a theory. I think what really stuck out to me is that she had left everything behind except the TV and her cat. Why did she call the rental store to pick up her TV and then leave with the TV if that's what she did? And if something did happen to her or if somebody else was involved, isn't it odd also that the only thing that they seemed to take or steal from the apartment was the TV? If Tina possibly sold it for money, why then didn't she pick up her last paycheck or take her purse and wallet with her or any of her other belongings? She also left no clues that something might be going on causing her to leave or even be in some kind of trouble. Her disappearance is just completely baffling. Tina seemed to vanish into thin air. Tina Ray Wilson is described as a Caucasian woman about 5 foot 8 inches tall and weighing around 140 pounds when she was last seen. Tina has red hair and blue eyes. Tina was 43 years old back in April of 2005, and she would today be 62 years old. Tina has a tattoo of a flower on each breast and a tattoo of a black panther on her right shoulder. Anyone with any information on Tina Ray Wilson is asked to call the Whitehall Police Department at 614-237-6333. Curious to know what you think and if you had heard of Tina's story before, especially if you are from the Ohio area. I can see with the very limited information that this case would be hard to promote to the public and there was very little media on her story, at least until Sean Great came forward with his confession. Thank you so much for listening to Tina's story. Even with the limited info that we do have, I still think it's important that her story be heard and that her case be shared. Someone out there is likely to know something. Thank you so much for supporting the show as well as a patron or as a subscriber. We will be back again very soon with another unsolved missing person case. And until then, stay safe and hug your loved ones.